That call. That's that's it. The drama. The moment. The perfect poetic word choice and cadence. Knowing exactly what to say and how to say it. Let the moment breathe. That was my personal all-time favorite Vin Scully call, and there are many to choose from. Frankly, anytime Vin Scully was behind the microphone, it was a treat. Listening to greatness. The single greatest play-by-play voice in the history of sportscasting, especially on baseball, where his sincere storytelling was on display in a fabric of Dodgers baseball for 67 years. Vin Scully passed away last night at the age of 94. I was gutted and emotional hearing the news, and I'm sure that you were too. My condolences to the Scully family, but also deep condolences to every Dodgers fan who felt that special attachment from generation to generation, from Brooklyn to Los Angeles, from Jackie to Sandy and Pee Wee and Gil Hodges to Steve Garvey and Fernando and Hershiser and the great Clayton Kershaw. The Signature. Hi, everyone, and good evening to you wherever you may be. It is time for Dodger baseball. He was a fabric of Los Angeles and Southern California. And for me, listening to him call Dodgers games while I was on the East Coast in New York, I mean, it was out of a movie, 10.30 at night, local time, and 7, 7.30 in L.A., and you would see the gorgeous sun, palm trees, The signature clean white jerseys with the blue cap and Vin Scully. His voice and play-by-play helped me as a child fall in love with baseball, my first and true love. I loved when he called the game of the week on NBC when I was growing up in the 80s. I was intoxicated by his voice, his sound. Every game he called was special. The word choice for the moments, the Gibson home run. Hank Aaron moving past Babe Ruth. The Don Larson, perfect game in the World Series. How about Montana to Clark, the catch in the back of the end zone? Scully was on the microphone for that in the NFL. Of course, the ground ball through Buckner's legs. The Clayton Kershaw no-no, begging him to get it. One out to go. One miserable, measly out. Then the camera showed Kershaw's wife, and Scully said, Hang in there, Ellen. Vin was your friend calling the action, your uncle, giving you the finer points of Dodgers baseball. There's no debates. There's never been a debate. The incredibly wonderful and classy Vin Scully was the greatest play-by-play voice ever. Happy birthday, Tom Brady. And look, Tom, I tend to disagree with you there. Players come to Tampa to play with the GOAT and... Why not? Tom Brady turns 45 years old today, and he's going to be 45, obviously, when the season starts, becoming the oldest player in NFL history to start a game at quarterback. And Brady said five years ago he was playing when he was 45, and I always believe that would be the case. And I believe, and this will be the backdrop for us all year on Time to Shine, this will be the final year of Tom Brady's legendary career. And he is the greatest quarterback of all time, the greatest player of all time. The numbers, the feel, it all speaks for itself. But I think Tom Brady is in some trouble this year. I'm very concerned about this. Issues on the offensive line. And you know Tom Brady, he does not like to be hit. What quarterback does? Now, obviously, he was number two for MVP last year behind Aaron Rodgers, and Tom Brady is going to be great. He always is, right? It's Tom Brady we're talking about at the end of the day, and the weapons are plentiful, and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and Julio Jones and Russell Gage and Leonard Fournette. Todd Bowles takes over, and I I still think that Tom is going to be great and the Bucs are going to make the playoffs. But I think Father Time... And the Saints are going to rule the NFC South. I don't think Brady is going to be as great as he was last year because of those issues on the offensive line. And he's 45. And I love the Saints this year. Michael Thomas is back. I love the Jarvis Landry pickup. I love the Chris Olave draft pick. And I love Jameis Winston getting to throw to all of the above. I think the New Orleans Saints, when it's all said and done, with Kamara, with Thomas, with Jameis Winston, with Honey Badger, with Dennis Allen, 
running that team and running that defense, taking over for Sean Payton. I think it's the Saints division in the South. So, Tom, happy birthday. 45. Welcome to the club, my friends. But I think this is it for Tom Brady as a great player and as a quarterback in the NFL. And he's going to finish as the runner-up in the NFC South. As the great George Costanza once said, it's not a lie if you believe in high and blue. Needless to say, the Boston Red Sox are a complete and utter joke. And this is not going to be one of those, I'm a Yankee fan, laugh out loud Red Sox. I feel bad for the Boston Red Sox fans. I feel bad for the Red Sox players. Look at the moves on this board. Tell me what the direction of this team was at the trade deadline. They traded Vasquez and they don't have a real catcher on the roster. Popular player, 2018 champion. They brought in Eric Hosmer. I mean, this isn't the 2015 Kansas City Royals. Tommy Pham of fantasy football fame. I mean, are you going for it? What, what was the move here? I just don't understand it. And frankly, Bloom takes a hit. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense. Why is J.D. Martinez still on this team? If you were going for it, were you going to booster the bullpen or are you going to help out the rotation? And if you don't take my word for it, how about Xander Bogarts saying that, yeah, he's disappointed. I mean, nobody knows what on earth is going on here. And by the way, Bogart should have got a new contract. Devers should have got a new contract. And if you're not going to pay these guys, then you should have traded them because, you know, the Red Sox have to leapfrog all these teams. So, hell if I know. But even worse, hell if I am Bloom knows. You look at where they are in the standings. You look at the moves that were made at the trade deadline. You read that quote from Bogart's what is the direction of this team? The Red Sox month of July was atrocious. They couldn't pitch. They couldn't hit. They couldn't field. They couldn't win. And Hyam Bloom needed direction first couple of days of August at the trade deadline. They were rudderless. They were gutless. They should have even either decided go for it or break the whole thing down. And Red Sox fans are smart. Passionate, savvy, smart baseball fans. If they sold everyone, I'm talking about Devers and Bogarts and Avaldi and Martinez, they would have understood it, would have been upset about homegrown players leaving, but you would have at least understood there was a plan. There's no plan. I feel bad for Red Sox Nation. The Sox are a joke. A vintage performance from Jacob DeGrom last night. Five dominant innings, six strikeouts, and... No run support. I mean, if you're a Mets fan, you have to be having deja vu all over again and not in a good way in terms of lack of run support. But Mets jokes and yuck yucks aside, DeGrom, five innings, his fastball was humming, averaging 99 miles per hour on the cheese that he was dealing last night. He was flat out sensational. I'm not worried about the lack of run support. I mean, Look at that strikeout to walk ratio. He had him pitched before last night in over a year. Look, the bullpen was terrible. Obviously, the offense was terrible. That's one game. DeGrom pitches like this. DeGrom's healthy. The upside for the New York Mets is to go to the World Series and win it. He has to say the Pittsburgh Steelers are very high on Mitch Trubisky, and I think he has a major leg up to win this quarterback battle over Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph, who I barely even put in the equation. Mitch Trubisky has talent. Mitch Trubisky won a lot of games in Chicago, obviously maligned because he was the number two overall pick, and they picked him ahead of Watson and Mahomes. Not his fault. He got his PhD in quarterbacking. You heard Cam Hayward reference that last year in Buffalo where he learned from Josh Allen, Brian Dayball, and I think Mitch Trubisky is a major upgrade over Ben Roethlisberger the last couple of years. Not the Hall of Fame version, but the last couple of seasons. And sure, Kenny Pickett, you know I love him. Obviously, the Steelers drafted him first round. He's a, an experienced young player, played a lot of Pittsburgh, took the University of Pittsburgh to new heights on offense. But I think Trubisky's going to start. I love the vibe of this team with Harris, 
running the football. The offensive line is improved. Hayward's a stud. T.J. Watt is unbelievable. Improved the defense with Miles Jack at the linebacker position. No one's talking about the Steelers. I think Trubisky is the right guy, right time. They'll figure out a Johnson contract, that receiver. I love George Pickens who they drafted. Claypool, Hayward says, is finally starting to get it. Addition by subtraction with Juju leaving. No more TikToks or dancing on logos. Don't sleep on the Steelers. I think they're going to win 10 games this upcoming season. So flabbergasted that the Panthers are having a quarterback competition. I mean, just... Just make Baker Mayfield the starting quarterback. I mean, Sam Darnold was dreadful. I mean, look at those numbers from last year. I mean, hide your eyes. And you know I'm not a Baker truther, but I do think that the change of scenery, I think with these weapons, I think Baker Mayfield is going to have a bounce back season, but he needs reps with these guys to develop the chemistry. Baker's the guy. That's why they made the trade. Just end the dopey quarterback competition and give him all the reps with the first team. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.